Welcome, all fellow wannabes. Welcome to the show. You are listening to The Wannabe Critic. I'm one of your hosts, Gabriel Fast, and joining me is one of my partners in crime, Mikey Collins, via Zoom chat. How are you, Mikey? I am pretty good. You feeling good? You feeling that PS5 energy, are you, boy? That's right. Get in there nice and deep, black boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, good. Sorry. I'm sorry. I got a little curious with that one. Uh, Mikey, how are you? Ew. <laughs> doing good i'm just really excited i'm really excited to talk about this i'm sorry if i can't contain it i just i can't i cannot help myself of how absolutely excited i am to talk about the ps5 it's here we've seen it we've seen some of the games we see some of these things that are going on well you you got to watch some of it live right uh most of it yeah yeah so you that was one of the longest presentations i've ever seen for video games and it's probably my favorite presentation of any conference i've ever seen i was like i tweeted at someone and i was like this is like the most memorable and best presentation i've seen like e3 what like i don't know i can't remember a time where i just was watching the screen and just seeing games for that long like you hear the developer or you know herman holst come on be like hey check this out this is what we're working on game like boom 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 it was like the game awards on crack i loved it i don't know I'm not I'm not a Xbox guy by any means, but last year's E3 with Xbox was pretty game filled. Like that's what it felt like to me. I was like, is this an Xbox conference? Yeah. <laughs> are you talking about their way. like are you talking about like whenever um Keanu Reeves came on stage? Yeah, they were just like Xbox yeah. exclusive, like for yeah. like thirty minutes. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Lord. When they were going, they were really doubling down on the game pass. So Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And that that was hype. That was hype. That was good. Yeah. This was better for me personally like mm-hmm. i i don't know there's just we'll get into it but ladies and gentlemen if you didn't know already um you're listening to the wannabe critic uh your what your weekly stop for diversity anything from random topics to comic reviews to album reviews to interviews to movies and tv show reviews right now we're going for the fast and furious saga as well as kind of banking some other reviews of stuff we're doing um you know we uh we like to we like to review things here it's your one-stop family-friendly content shop all done in wannabe fashion and geeked out goodness um and our constant efforts and attempts to make quality content we have branched off into several podcast feeds of which are available to you as the listener right now you can go to wannabecritic.com to check out those various podcast feeds yeah you you went over to detroit go to wannabecritic.com to check out game club to check out uh story time a star wars podcast to check out a guy and his wife we've got merch we got our content schedules we got the whole thing if you want to see what's going on with the wannabe critic we're going to be updating that website as we go along so please go check that out but mikey we're not here to talk about any of that crap we're here to talk about the freaking ps5 reveal event and obviously we were able we don't have the capabilities of streaming you have a you have a job you work full time i i don't have good enough internet to stream or else i would have streamed my reactions so we're getting a podcast and youtube video out as soon as possible to make this happen so thank you for being here thank you for watching it mikey thank you for taking the time i know we just recorded a couple of other shows so i hope you got some hype fuel left in the tank you know what i mean for for this discussion so I have a question for you before we get started. A couple of weeks ago, you know, before all these riots and things happening, and we were supposed to get this event last week, but obviously, you know, out of respect for things going on, Sony decided to postpone it, which, you know, I think is the right decision. Um, but you said in that uh, conversation we had a few weeks ago that you, the contributing factor to to, to what, what console you were going to buy would be solely based on the games. Now... I want to say we saw like eight or nine PlayStation exclusive games, something PlayStation Studios games. Mm -hmm. From what you thought of today's presentation, are you sold on getting a PS5? Everything but. Like, yes, it does get me hyped for PlayStation 5, like Horizon and, and, and Spider Man and all of their like smaller games that look pretty cool and everything looks like beautiful but i've been playing xbox for so long like i can't say definitively that i won't want to get an xbox until i see the games line up but just knowing what 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 they do for sure like playstation is 100 percent releasing and games that they've already announced i am still heavily leaning towards getting a playstation 5 okay there you go so if it kind of comes out to be that thing of which you know we got the digital edition announced alongside the ps5 which i did not see coming honestly 
Um, so if we saw if we saw Lockhart ended up being something like three ninety nine, and we see the digital edition, which I don't think this is going to happen, but if we see the digital edition being something like three ninety nine, could you see yourself owning both? That is a possibility. Yeah, that's where I see myself, honestly. Um, yeah, keeping my Mac Daddy PS four Pro, uh, you know, uh, hundred million or whatever edition. Um, <laughs> for you know my discs and stuff like that my blu-ray player of sorts and going fully digital for this next generation whenever it comes to xbox and playstation i just think that yeah. might be the smartest way to go depending on the price point i haven't seen a price point yet but i could see myself going that route just trading in my xbox one x because i already got the money for my playstation 5 pretty much so mm -hmm. you know if you trade in the xbox one x you can you can defray the cost a little bit you know but only time will tell, and we don't know what the box costs. We saw the box. What, what's your what's your what's your impressions on how the on how the box looks? I was shocked. Like, I I was just like I I've never had a like a mouth open like jaw on the floor kind of moment with yeah. video games. Like I was just like, they went that route, and it's. I love it. It's it fits PlayStation where they've been going for years because you can tell with their consoles and their controllers they're they're they've always been edgy, but now they're just like you know what, screw it. We're just gonna yeah. do what we want to do, and I love it. I do too. I, I don't. The one thing, the one gripe I do have about the way the console looks is, I I I love the all digital version. Yeah. The version with the disc drive, it seems a bit off. Yeah. I don't know. It might be my ADD because I like things being like symmetrical yeah. and stuff like but I just I love the sleek design of the all digital one and and the fact that they they announced they showed off headphones, a remote, a camera, connect anyone and then uh <laughs> and then uh the controllers that are that charger that for the controllers. I think that's great. Yeah, I like I didn't see anything that I didn't like. Yeah, there was no red flags over here for me either. Um yeah. And it was one of those things, once I saw the accessories, I'm like, I want it all. Like, yeah. I want the headset. I want the charging station. I want to have the extra controller. Like, I want to buy the camera, you know. And the fact of the matter is, I think there's going to be bundles where you're going to have, you're going to have to buy those things anyways. Probably, it'll be probably, to, you know, it'll probably add to the price point. Yeah. But that's fine because I, I want to be a part. I want to be a part of the hype day one. And honestly, this has sold me on if I'm going to be a part of the hype day one. If I'm if yeah. if I'm going to have one day one, I will 100 percent have one the day it comes out. If if I can, if I can get my hands on one. Yeah, I'm I don't know. Like I kind of I'm kind of burned on the day one stuff. I don't I, I have a hard time getting on that train, especially like pre-orders and stuff like because this is all spec speculatory, like right now. Like, it, it it looks awesome, and it it seems like it's gonna be awesome, but like, when it launches, all of these consoles are gonna have problems. Like, it's yeah. just inevitable. And yeah. With what what games that they have problems with? So I'll probably wait a while, no matter what, because I just I I don't like going through that anymore. Cause I went through that with the uh, the Xbox One when it came out, and especially on the Xbox One because that was a nightmare when that came out, like for everything that, right. that you had to download and, and wait on. And I'm not saying this is going to be like that, but I, I'll probably just give myself a buffer and just wait till everybody's like, now is good. Get one now. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's the thing. And, and I would have been in the same boat as you, but whenever, you know, you're trying to expand and like have a topical web show of sorts, that's it's kind of like, how do you justify not having one day one, or at least saying you tried to get one day one. So that's kind of where I'm at, where I'm at with it. And you know, it comes down to, I have never had a console break on me, ever. Even ones that I bought, like, day one. Because I bought a PS4 day one. and You never got a 360 with a red ring? Nope. Never happened to really? me. Never happened to me. Twice. That's funny. Bad luck, Brian, over here. I think at this point, you know, like, I've heard people of having to buy a new PlayStations, people's PlayStations breaking. And, you know, it's also coming from the same people that leave their PlayStations on all the time, you know, and kind of mis mistreat it and things like if you take care of the product and PlayStation has a track record of having really good hardware, I, I don't think you're going to have a problem. You know, it's and I can see things being buggy with the software. I mean, I'm like, you know, working on things right now, like trying to, you know, get trophies and stuff right now, like just buy the time until certain games come out that I want to play and yeah. games that feel like they've been around forever still crashing, you know, and it's like, OK, well. From the software software sides of things, you know, they're always going to be trying to fix it. But I want to be part of the hype day one. So, 
yeah. I'm I'm very yeah, excited. I'm, I see it from that standpoint. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited to be a part of this. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to kind of skate through this event, this reveal event, and kind of just go beat by beat a little bit of what they, you know, did and maybe just kind of, you know, throw it to a few a few specific games, ones that we saw cool. So, if Mikey, if anything stands out to you, I'm going to be looking at my list. Just go ahead and shout it out. So, they did something. I thought they were about to announce Grand Theft Auto 6 at the beginning of the com- of the, you know, presentation. But they announced the GTA Expanded Edition, GTA 5 Sp- Expanded Edition, where if you have GTA 5 now and you're a GTA Online player, you will be able to get $1 million in shark cash or whatever whatever the money is, however that works, every month until the new edition comes out exclusively on PlayStation. So that's a $1 million for your GTA Online account, um, you know, until the Expanded Edition comes out on next gen. Then they did something that I did not think that they were going to do. They announced Spider-Man. Now, they said all of this stuff was captured from PS5. All this stuff was captured in-game PS5 footage. I think releasing Spider-Man, you know, they're saying Spider-Man's coming out holiday 2020, and you played through Spider-Man, right? You didn't. I haven't gotten to touch it yet. That's why I've been trying to get back into PlayStation. So... I, I, I left PlayStation right before all of the giant games came out oh, man right after battlefront 2, right after uncharted 4 came out is right after right before i sold my playstation and that's really so whenever missed, it started hitting its stride too yeah i, I missed horizon i missed uh, yeah. god of war i missed uh la- i even missed last of us because i just never had a playstation 4 when people were hyped on that right when the remaster came out right i missed everything like that makes playstation what it is and i think that's why i've I've never never been drawn to it, but yeah, so I haven't, there's a bunch that I haven't experienced. Well, yet. I don't want to spoil Spider-Man for you, but obviously you saw the the trailer and who the who the protagonist is for I that. No, I, I, I looked away. <laughs> <sighs> Dang. It looked cool. I was like, oh, nope. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't want to, I mean, I, I didn't know that. I really want to, I, I feel like we need to address it for the sake of the show, but I don't want to like. You can, it's fine. I mean, it's Spider-Man. I know who the villains are. Yeah, well, and that's the thing is, we know into the Spider Verse, Miles Morales is a huge part of the Spider Verse at this point, yeah. and you know, I'm spoiler alert, Mikey. Sorry, he does show up in the first in the first Spider Man game. No, yeah, I knew that already. Okay, I know I know a lot about that game. I okay. just don't know the ending and stuff like. that. Okay, well there you go. So you know, basically, it, him and Peter have kind of a mentoring moment of sorts. You know, even across the comics and stuff like that. And I don't think anyone in their right mind should be thinking right now that this is exclusively going to be on PS5. Um, I think, you know, you have one of the highest games with people platinuming the game, first of all. It's one of the highest percentage of platinums for a a PlayStation game. Um, I don't think we're only going to see this on PS5. I could be wrong. I've been wrong many a time before. Who's the developer on it? It's Insomniac. So Insomniac is also, they kind of gave Insomniac their own little... Well, I guess they split it up in between Grand Turismo, but Insomniac are the people who do Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. And you can definitely feel that in the Spider-Man game, kind of with the way the gadgets work and stuff like that, and just kind of watching how it kind of has that that Spider-Man 2018 touch to it. I don't think that this is a... I don't... I think this is going to be a glorified DLC in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. In a continuation. I don't think we're... At, I don't know. I haven't been on Twitter. I've been podcasting since the event happened, literally from since the event happened. I haven't been able to like read anything on it, but I think we're going to be seeing that be a cross-gen thing of you can buy Spider-Man on PS5 with the Miles Morales DLC, and I also think that it will have, um, you know, like PS5 will have its version, PS4 it'll be DLC. So I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I, I don't think that it's going to be its own thing on PS5. But I did think. I do think they tried to showcase an opportunity for it to be specifically on PlayStation. Kind of like how with Infamous Second Son, um, Infamous First Light came out much later. Um, but it kind of was it was a standalone DLC. Or kind of even like um Uncharted uh Lost Legacy a little bit. Like it's got a lot of the same That's frame Yeah, like a lot of the same framework, but you know, it's doesn't it's not like a from the ground up process. So I mean I guess it could be its own game, but only time will tell. Then I'll, this is something I wanted to get your opinions on. They show off the next Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo 7, and this is my notes, is it looks so good. I said Forza for PlayStation. Um, I liked the cockpit view. Did you notice the rear view camera live action while it's going? Down to the bottom right, while he's in the cockpit, there was a camera 
where he could see behind him. Like you could see, instead of having to look behind you, you just look on that screen. And then even just watching that demo, I was immediately sucked into the realism of, oh my God, I feel like I'm actually driving right now. Did you notice that? Well, they have that in Forza. With a rear view mirror in your HUD? They actually, like, you can use your mirrors physically in Forza. Like, they have a reflection behind you. I'm sorry, not a mirror. It's a camera. So it's a rear view oh. camera playing real time behind you. So instead of having to look in your rear view mirror, it's like... You have that too in, in your HUD options. Really? Okay. Well, well I, so. I've, not, I've not been able to experience it. But I just, it, it drew me in and it looked... It looked really, really cool. Um, what did you it think? Looked, you're, it I, looked good. I know you're a big Forza guy. What did you think? I mean, like, Gran Turismo, like, I've played it over the years, but, like, Forza is, like, Forza is model, like, for me. Like, that, that's what I base all racing games off of. And it looked good, but, like, when they showed the in-game footage, it looked like, it looked like Forza, Forza 4, Forza 4 to Forza 5 to me. It didn't look like next gen racing game in in my opinion, but it looked it looked like they're trying something new cuz I remember the the previous Gran Turismo that I saw, I was like, "Woo, they need to step up." So, it's a it looks like a giant leap from what they've done previously. So, yeah. I'm excited to see and and it, it that could be because maybe maybe they were hindered by the covid stuff that's going on and maybe that's why it's not it doesn't seem like it's 100%, you know. Right. I'm excited to see what they do with it, especially because I love racing games. So. And what I think they're trying to do is I don't think they're necessarily trying to be exactly like Forza or really compete to that same level. I think no, that they yeah. what they want to do is give PlayStation players and even players who are maybe unhappy with Xbox are just another reason to come over to PlayStation and say, yeah, you know what? Reason. We know. Yeah. Like we know you don't. We know this isn't as good as Forza. But guess what? It's the next best thing. Yeah. And you don't have to have the new Xbox console to play it. Like you can have the exclusives and you can have a dope racing game that may feel just a little bit different. And with the haptic feedback, I don't know. We don't have hands on with it. I'm going to buy it because it looks awesome to me. And I'm ready to just fully make the jump to just be like, you know what? Like I have an Xbox for certain stuff, turn it on a couple of times a year, but like I'm fully ready to invest and be on the ecosystem of all the games I play are on PlayStation. That's where I like to be, and I, I don't want to have I don't want to have to turn my Xbox on to play a racing game. Is what I'm trying yep. to say. That's um, where I'm at. Yeah. So that was I, I really liked that demonstration. I liked the, just the little bit we got. Really good demonstration. Well done on their part. Then they go back to Insomniac and they show off Ratchet and Clank, which to me looked gorgeous. I thought it looked awesome. I have Ratchet and Clank saved on my PlayStation. I haven't played it. Um, I used to play the old ones back in the day. You know, I think you and I both did. Those those were fun yeah. times. Just the way the gadgets work and just really satisfying gunplay and just a lot of fun. You know, just 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 fun. Like fun and fun. More and more and more fun. Fun on top of fun. Um, looks like we're going to be getting like some interdimensional stuff. Uh, you think you'll be picking up Ratchet and Clank whenever it comes out, whenever you buy your PS5? I don't know. I, I might try it. It looked intense. Like for Ratchet Clank game, like Clank game, it looked like like insane like but i think it's gonna be interesting i i might get it and try it just to see how the loading works because uh, did you hear him talking about like how it's all different loading times as they're going so they are having to load new worlds without loading times and stuff i want I, i'm just interested to see because the, the gameplay that they showed it i'm gonna be honest it looked kind of glitchy like every time he would go through a portal the game yeah. would like shift kind of Right. So I'm interested to see how like actually on console with hands on it will be like if it's right. smoother. I think but. I think you know and the it, it will be different. The fact of the matter yeah. is it will be For and sure. there was a lot of those things it looks too smooth almost to the point where it does look kind of glitchy and I felt a lot of a lot of these demonstrations had this weird thing of well, the combat look just this combat looks really similar to the combat that I just saw, you know, and I feel like the developers are even still trying to learn how to use the engine, you know, and or you know, just yeah. just use the hardware that they have available to them now and this is their first try really being able to 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 do it. You know, you talk about like the PlayStation 3, it took them forever to try and really utilize the hardware and really even with the PS4, we're just now getting to the full potential like with The Last of Us 2 coming out. Like I've been hearing talk of this is our most this is the the most money Sony has ever thrown at a game like type thing as far as technology goes and stuff like that. So being able to utilize that technology to the best of the developer's ability 
I think we're really going to see a step up. And that's why they keep saying the future of gaming, because they're working with all these different people who have these huge impacts in the gaming industry to make these one of a kind experiences that you're, I don't think you're going to get anywhere else. Um, but I agree with you. Like it did look intense for Ratchet and Clank, but it kind of goes back to that thing of they know what they're doing. They've been doing it for years. Even how Spider-Man works sometimes, like you'll be playing Spider-Man. It's like, God, this is freaking hard. I keep dying. My gadgets, you know, figuring out the right combinations of ways to use your gadgets. Like, okay, I'm going to use the gravity rift, throw those guys up in the air. Then I'm going to use the trip mine. And while they're in the air, like they're going to stick to the ground because I threw the trip mine and like this thing, it just, the way it works, I'm just really excited to see that happen. And I can't, I need to make time to go back and play the Ratchet and Clank for PS4. Um, yeah. cause it, you know, I feel like it's going to be you know, you're gonna ha- you're gonna have to. <laughs> so that looked pretty cool. L- looked really good. Um, then they announced a new IP project, Athea, um, PS5 only, PS5 exclusive, built on Unreal Engine 5. Um, looks pretty dope. Um, didn't show a ton of that. Then they showed that really weird cat game, Stray. Did you see that? Yeah, th- I don't get the premise. There's no humans left. Is that what that was? Yeah. So there's only robots, no humans left, and you play as a cat. Okay, because I was like. Okay, there's a cat, there's yeah. some robots, there's a cat again. What is happening? Because on the, on the stair, above the stairs, it I said... Also, it, I was eating at the same time, yeah. so I kind of was... Right. Well, and on the top of the staircase, it says RIP humans, so... Oh, really? Yeah, okay, so yeah, I, I think understand. there's there's no humans left. I think you, you play as a cat, and, like, how, you know, how does that work, basically? Then we have this, like, really weird... Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it is. It, I, I mean, I'm down. I'm If... All these first-party exclusives, the PlayStation Studios titles, I'm down with. Like, bring them on. I, I want to be a part of the entire thing. Yeah. Um, I have this game written down called uh, Returnal, and I said Space Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it kind of looked like, you know, look, looked interesting. Looked a little weird. Her uh, animations were kind of throwing me off a little bit. Like, it looked a little too real, in my opinion. Um, or just like like the idiosyncrasies a little bit, kind of, uh, or mannerisms looked a little too human-like, so it's kind of thrown me off. Um, and then obviously we got Sackboy. Did you play much Little Big Planet ever? You know, I've never played a Little Big Planet game. I, so many people say that's some of their favorite games. Like, I don't want to say non gamer, non hardcore gamers, like, love those games. I've never tried one. They look interesting. They look fun. They look like fun and family friendly yeah. and stuff like that. But I never, I never touched one. I really feel like, you know, the PS3 era, like, the mascot for the PS3 in a lot of ways was Sackboy. And. Um, yeah, most people like that had a Vita seem to have played that a lot too. Yeah, the Vita version, I think, uh, Little Big Planet, whatever. Um, it very much has those Mario isms to it a little bit, you know. And as I'm watching, it, I'm like, it reminds me of the boss battles that I was seeing reminded me of what I saw in Super Mario Odyssey. So, yeah. and it, and it, it has the the Little Big Planet charm, but not necessarily the same format as what I'm used to seeing. It very much looks like Mario, like Super Mario World. Like get through the get through the level, do your thing, whatever. So, I'm I'm down. Like I'm, I want to try. I'm down with all these games. There wasn't any that I didn't that I saw that I didn't like. Um, did you see basically the Battle Rocket League Destruction All Stars? Yeah, that looks. So is it like free running if your car gets broken and then you can like I, I jump on top? It looks insane. Yeah, it looked cool. It looks so- it looks like something. It's I doubt Rocket League. I, I think it's more like Battle Royale, like last one to live. But it's interesting that you can get out of your car, so to like if yeah. everybody's car. Bro- like I have so many questions. Like, yeah, I do too. And my thing is the aesthetic wise. I'm like this looks the way the cars are moving, the way everything is moving, the way the cars look, the way the cars look when they turbo boost. I'm like this looks like Rocket League to me. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't mean like the premise is the same, but it like looked yeah. kind of like. Rock'em Sock'em Robots meets Rocket League. Like, it's survival of the fittest, basically. And I think Battle Royale is kind of... That might be what it is. But, yeah, I'm just... Yeah. I have a lot of questions, too. But it, it looked cool. It looked interesting. Yeah, it, de- it looked like a de- lot of fun. Yeah. The destruction looked really cool. I like how it, it seems like there's going to be, like, different classes. Yeah. Like subclasses of, like, cars. Right. And people to drive them. That's going to be interesting. I think I think that'll be cool to see. Yeah, will be cool, too. Is, is that on your end or my end? The beeping. What? Did you hear that beeping? Oh, okay. My bad. It must have been on my end then. Fire alarm going off. But yeah, I, I agree with everything you just said. Um, Then we have this new one uh, called Kena Bridge of Stars. Yeah. That was probably the most impressive thing I'd seen so far just because we kind of saw some gameplay. We saw it looked like Pixar level animation. 
Um, yeah. It just looked really, really cool. Um, by those guys that made movies that yeah. they did the intro. They only right. come from making movies and animating stuff. Yeah, like I followed them on Twitter. They had 600, they had 600 followers on Twitter um, as of today. Let's see how wow. many they have now. I think it's something lab. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not Brids of Stars, it's Bridge of Spirits. Yeah, so they, <laughs> Ember Lab is who was working on it. Um, as of today, they had 600 followers and I followed them. They now have 4,800 followers. So Lord. that's a pretty dope, that's, awesome. uh, that's a pretty dope return, I would say, for, for Ember Lab. So I'm, I'm excited. It looks awesome. It looks like a Pixar level experience. I love Pixar. Deliver that emotion, man. Like make that playable. I've been saying that for a long time. Um, so next we have Goodbye Volcano High. Did you get to see this one? Um, Goodbye Volcano Yeah, it was like really weirdly drawn. Very interesting art style, like with dinosaurs and like they were like... Oh, yeah. That was weird. So I think I think what I gather is going to happen is you're going to be playing out this story. And I, I, it was not making sense to me at all. I'm like, is, am I in some sort of furry experience right now? Like, what is going on? Yeah. I think you're going to be playing as a dinosaur prehistoric, you know, per animal. Mm -hmm. And then I saw this like meteor crash and I was like, goodbye. Vol oh my God. Are you going to like have this experience with all these different critters and like all these, you know, people. And then the apocalypse is going to come for the dinosaurs. And it's like kind of this symbolic, like you feel like, you know, whenever you're about to graduate high school, like it's kind of like the end of the world a little bit, like your entire yeah. world comes crashing down. Cause if that's what they're going for, I will buy into that and bite into it hard because that sounds like right up my alley. So I don't know if I'm reading too much into that, but if the developers are listening, maybe they would uh, offer some sort of, you know, collaboration or, or, or come on for an interview. Maybe we we'll make that happen. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, what, what, what was your take on that? that did you, what'd you think? It's probably not a game that I'll play be, to be honest, but it, it looked interesting. I've never seen a game with that kind of art style that that's going to be interesting to, to, to see how that plays yeah. out. Yeah, it's like, is it, a, I, is it a visual novel or... Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. I just don't know how you would be able to make that art style playable, but we may not... I mean, that who knows if that was even gameplay. We just know it was captured on the PS5, so uh, Maybe who it's knows? like a decision-based game where you're not actually playing. Maybe. Just kind of following along. Yeah, maybe like kind of like in a Telltale kind of way, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be dope. Um, We're getting a new Oddworld game. You ever played Oddworld before? Stranger's Wrath or um, Abe's Odyssey. I've never played it either, but I, I grew up, you know, kind of watching it, and um, I'd be down with it. Sorry, I had to burp. Um, I get burpy, you know. Yeah, I do. I sure do. Get put that on. Put, somebody put that on a hat. Um, so Oddworld Soulstorm, which a lot of people were freaking out on this about, you know, freaking out about this rather on Twitter, but I don't know anything about it. Um. So it looked cool. The it looked visually impressive. It looked it looked interesting. So, you know, who knows? That might be right up my alley. Might have to check it out. Then we had a uh, uh, a showing for a game that got quite a bit of hype last year. Ghostwire Tokyo. The lead the lead developer. She actually left um, in the middle of the project, and now we're kind of seeing, you know, a new lead developer and director kind of bring something to the forefront of it. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo kind of like this weird really interesting kind of remind it kind of the combat kind of looked like a weirder version of um like mirror's edge a little bit like you're it's a first person experience i mean did you catch that at all like did you gather that it looked funky yeah it just looked weird yeah it looked really it looked weird like simple like i think that's probably the the feel they're going through because it looked like it looked like real life tokyo but it you could tell there's some off about it. I yeah, think that's probably what the point is, though, about that game. Yeah, well, and he's even said he's like, we want to make you feel like you're in Tokyo, basically. You yeah, know? exactly. So. That, that mission accomplished. Yeah, I'm. Off. I mean, I'm interested. Like, I, I'm not like over the moon. Like, oh my god, I can't wait. But I mean, you know, maybe I'll check it out, see what's up. Yeah. Then we have what looked to me to be kind of like a. Uh, like Kerbal Space Program meets like adventure, which was Jet. Um, the far shore, uh, and this one looked really interesting to me because it started out like with the year one. I wonder if it's one of those games you can just keep exploring, um, you know, like as time is going on. But uh, I don't know. It, it, what, what did you think of it? Did you hear the beeping that time? 
Yeah, is that you? Yeah, it must have been me. I don't know what my wife's doing. Maybe oh, she's okay. having a hard time. Um, I don't know. It looked pretty simple. It, it, I, I thought they were going to show more, but then it turned out to be like really – to be honest, it kind of looked like a phone game. Like, yeah. From what I saw. So, like, I don't – I, they didn't really give me anything to, like, know what it was going to be. It, 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 you know what vibes it gave me? It gave me uh, – oh, God. I just want to say sorry. She just, she just wanted to say <laughs> – she just wanted to say sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Right. okay. Um, yeah, it was simple vibes, and you wanted to see more and stuff like that. Yeah, it was like – yeah, it, like it, it gave me um, um, Space Odyssey vibes. I was like, I wonder what they're gonna do with that. You know? Like, yeah. It was interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what's gonna happen too. Like it it looked interesting. Um, you know, but we'll we'll see what happens. And who knows? We don't know how many of these games are supposed to be indie games either. So there's that. Um, then we have a a game called Godfall. Uh, is everything okay over there? <laughs> idiot <laughs> all right so then we had godfall i don't really want to talk about it, it looked just kind of like i don't know it just didn't really do anything for me it looked Dude, it, another phone game yeah i was like it looks like uh, it looked like a advertisement for a phone game kind of yeah but this next shadow legends <laughs> yeah ra play raid shadow legends um every youtuber who sponsored hey i love this game it's great check it out um <laughs> Solar Ash. Now, this one looks really cool to me. This is by Heart Machine. This is by the same people that did Hyper Light Drifter, which is one of the hardest games I've ever played. And it very much looked like it kind of had like a 3D Hyper Light Drifter vibe to it. Don't know if it's a sequel or what, but um, what did you think of it? I like I liked the contrasting colors, and it just it looked like something I might really enjoy. Did you were you picking up anything that looked kind of cool to you? It looked interesting. I mean. I a lot of these games, since I'm coming from Xbox, I don't have anything to base them off of. Right. So, like, I'm pretty much going in cold for them. But it looked... Everything that I saw from from that side of, the, of that game, yeah, it looks interesting. But it's 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 hard for me to want to play it, you know? Like, yeah. Spend the money it, on it. Yeah, because they look interesting. I'd have to look at a review of, of several of these. Not a review, but, like, just, like, a... This is what this game's about, right. or maybe even like a developer if they're gonna do any more developer like streams of their games. Yeah, I'd definitely check out that one. Yeah, right on. I feel like a lot of these have been pretty safe and like almost kind of kid friendly up until this next game, which was Hitman Three. Looks like they're kind of continuing that um, like yeah. season based uh, vibe that the first two Hitman games have played, and I haven't played any. I haven't played any Hitman games since Absolution, which came out back in like 2012. Uh, um, but doesn't really do anything for me, you know? Like, yeah, me I know for a lot of people it's going to be like, oh, my God, but I don't know, not really up my alley. Um, then we get, like, kind of a Astrobot spinoff, which Astrobot is the VR, like, kind of mascot for VR. And it looks like he's kind of getting his little, his little uh, oh, you know, game, like Mario game of sorts, which is fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. This next game, though, literally looks like the Zelda game that the PlayStation has needed for a really long time. Um, like little things that were happening. It's called Little Devil Inside. And obviously we didn't see any story, didn't see anything it was about, but watching certain things happen the com from the combat to like the exploration, like when he has that gun, he's chasing the bear and just the way the, the art style is like, it's like this like really weird paper mache type thing. And yeah. like just the whole vibe, I'm like, this looks freaking awesome. I've never seen anything like this before. And it very much was giving me kind of like ex Zelda exploration vibes a little bit. I'm like, man, this, this, if this was a sixty dollar game, like, would it be worth it? Is it an indie game? Like, how? What's the deal with it? You know what I mean? What, what did you think of it? Did, were you getting those kind of like Zelda vibes? Well, dude, I've never gotten to play Zelda, dude. Like, I I, I played Wind Waker, but like, yeah, exploratory. I never really did. Um, what's that new one? Breath of, uh, Breath of the Wild. I was about to say Ocarina of Time. Uh, Breath of Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I never gotten to that yet, so I don't know the like more exploratory stuff like that. But yeah. Wind Waker was like that, and I, yeah. I, could, I could see a relation, kind of. Well, and that's what I kind of saw the relation is. It kind of reminded me of, like, the way Wind Waker was even it? looks a little bit. Yeah, I mean, just... It but, looks simple, but, like... But yeah. there's depth. Like, it, yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I, that, that was one of my highest ones that I was interested in. So, mm -hmm. Little Devil Inside, I really want to see more of that. 
Um, we're going to skip over this next one. It's called Bug Snacks. Looked very bizarre. Um, it's from the ma- <laughs> it's from the makers of Octodad. Uh, dude, dude, I was like, I got up and came back to the, the feed and I was like, <laughs> what happened? What yeah. is this? Is this Animal Crossing? What is going on? <laughs> yeah. And then I, like a monster like formed at the end. I was like, no. Oh. Yeah, this is weird. Um, yeah. but who knows, you know, it might be the game of the century. You just, you it, never know, it but it looks like it might be funny. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it might be a sleeper funny game. Yeah. That's, and I think that's kind of, for a lot of people, I, I never played Octodad, but I think for a lot of people, that's what Octodad was, was, oh my God, this is hilarious. That so, you know, who knows? I might have to check it out. I, I plan on spending money on most of these games, if not all of them. Well, I'm not all of them, but some, most of them. Um, next we had Demon Souls, which is obviously the precursor to Dark Souls. Um, are you a Dark Souls guy at all? You like Dark Souls? What? I said, oh, did I? I'm sorry. Um, do you like Dark Souls at all? Wow. Never played. Never played. Yeah. And I mean, I guess probably the closest thing you've gotten is Jedi Fallen Order to Dark to Souls like combat. Um, but yeah, Demon Souls is basically like the precursor to, uh, um, Dark Souls. Dark Souls, and I believe I don't know if From Software is actually doing it, but I know um, J- uh, Sony Japan, I think, is the one who is working on it. So expect some very Japanese experiences if you decide to pick that one up. But this next one is one that I saw last year at E3 during Bethesda's conference, which was Death Loop. This has my attention. Um, it looked cool. The concept looked cool a year ago, and now that I see the aesthetic they're going for, kind of the direction they're going for, I'm like, okay, maybe this might be worth checking out. Um, essentially, it's spy versus spy. Um, you're trying to escape. If you die, you get you know you get put on a loop. Like you wind up on the shore and you are being hunted by these people. And anytime you die, you go back to this place. And I feel like what they're going to do is they're going to allow you to play not only as the person who's trying to escape, but also there's going to be another person who's hunting you, two assassins on the same loop all the time. So I don't know how this, I don't know how this doesn't work as a multiplayer game of maybe there's a story you're trying to get through and you get put into two lobbies. You can say, I either want to be the person trying to escape or the person trying to, um, you know, prevent the person from escaping don't see how that doesn't become a thing. I think that's kind of what they're going for. Which, if that's the case, I think that would be. Isn't that, what they, isn't that what they did with like that prey game though, or not prey? Oh man, what was that monster game where like people would go in and then be hunted by another monster? Predator. No, 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 no. no. Like it was like Xbox One launch. Like, uh oh, evolve, giant... evolve. Yeah, evolve. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that that didn't work the same way. This, I, and then obviously we don't have any gameplay. We don't have any hard details. We just have, you know, gameplay footage. But, you know, the the gameplay looks very much like Prey, which this is the developer that did Prey. Really? So, oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense. That's why I thought about that. Yeah, thing. so it's Prey and obviously Dishonored and things like that and very meticulous it detail. Me like We Happy Few meets Bioshock 5. That's, I could not say it better myself. That's exactly how I felt. Yeah. And, you know, they kind of have a very distinct... And, and that's the thing is I wasn't crazy about the first Dishonored game. Um, it's fine. It's good. Uh, and I need to finish it. Actually, people praise Dishonored too all the time, and people praise Prey for if you're able to get through it. Um, but this, the way the aesthetic looks, like I don't know, just the combat and just how cartoony it is, and like how I don't know if you saw, like there would be like a really weird, like matte colored like wall or something, and if someone got shot, like their, you know, like their blood's brown. So like it, it just looks like a it, it kind. Of, the the art style kind of reminded me of like the. Ding, 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 ding. like that montage in the incredibles like when it's super duper like blam pow just very comic oh. book like high contrast yeah. you know what i'm yeah, saying? I mean, mm-hmm. I see what you're saying yeah so that's kind of what i was getting like you know and if, if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about but i don't know that that is definitely on my radar you know i think that could be really fun especially just it it looks like it's it looks like it's taking simple mechanics and adding a more complex game loop into it so mm-hmm um, so you, you'll be picking it up maybe? Yeah, I'd definitely be down to try it. I don't know if it's a multiplayer thing. That might be a turnoff for me, honestly, for myself. It might be different if maybe if instead of a multiplayer, if it's like 
it's still single player, but you get to play both sides. Yeah, I would be that down would with be that cool. too. That would be cool too because then you kind of know what route you're you, or what if it, what if it tracks your movements as a player, kind of like how Super Hot you ever played Super Hot like. You have the slow mo, you know what I mean. So like maybe you have a certain route you go down, you're going through, and then you have to play the level later and try and remember what you did as you're coming from the opposite way. And can you stop yourself? Like that might be kind of cool too. So that would be really I don't know. I want to learn more about it. I'm, it's, I'm, I've been very intrigued since a year ago. Then we had a new game come out. Um, that this was leaked a while back. The name of this game, but seeing it on seeing it presented in this way i was like oh like here we go another like supernatural like you know whatever weird game like it's gonna be weird it's a freaking resident evil game which if you know anything about resident evil ladies and gentlemen you know that strange things happen because of this weird virus and if you know anything about resident evil 4 you know that whenever a strange cult gets a hold of something that contains a strange virus, strange things certainly do happen. And this kind of seemed like the second coming. From what I saw here, this very much was giving me Resident Evil 4 vibes of what am I doing here? And it kind of gave me like a Transylvania type vibe a little bit, like, you know, Frankenstein and, um, you know, the Wolfman and, and stuff like that, like where all these monsters come from. And whenever I saw Village and then I saw Resident Evil after that, I was like, wow that i was not expecting this i was not expecting this so i don't know ladies and gentlemen that might be one to keep your eyes on as well um you never really played resident evil did you yeah it will be scary holy crap you know like i I like the idea of resident evil i never played the old games but i i i did i dabbled in seven a lot and all these remasters i've seen a lot of walkthroughs and playthroughs and stuff but I've never played it myself, to be honest. Right. But I, I've always been interested, so this might be a good jumping-on point for me, especially yeah. if I'm going to take the time to to do research on it and invest in a new console. That'd yeah. Fun one to try out. I'm a very casual Resident Evil fan. I think it definitely has its place. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean this this was just a this was just a very impressive presentation overall. So there's that. Um, Pragma- Pragmata. I don't remember this game, but I have it written down, so it must not have done anything for me. Hmm, I'm trying to remember which one was after that one. Uh, Horizon was right after it. Why can't I remember it? That's weird. Wait, is that the one with, like, the the astronaut and the little girl? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the astronaut. Yeah, that, that looked, looked really wild. Cool. Yeah, that, if that, and I think that is a, uh, I think that's a PlayStation Studios game as well, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Man, yeah, that looked cool. Especially like that's gonna, oh, that's gonna be pretty. That's, that's gonna, gonna be cool. awesome. Especially like if she's if you start caring about this AI, holy crap, like if we get that that master chief and AI type vibe. Yep. Like Except something that like that. Yeah. Of- <laughs> or yeah, like yeah. maybe you lost your daughter and like you tried to that's rebuild her with new Oh my god, but we could run wild with the ideas and I would definitely have my eye on this. So Yeah, I love I, I I didn't know what to think of that suit design at first, but then I was just like Oh, he's like trying to survive. So like he's supposed to be bulky and tank to looking like a tank like that. That makes sense. Right. I really I really dug it after after I started seeing like the movement and what was going on. Yeah. It looked but. it looked it looked like a lot of these games looked like anything I you know, unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, that one will definitely have my attention too and and I I can't wait for these details to start rolling out about these games and yeah. who knows how many of them are are you know, obviously Resident Evil isn't going to be specific to um PlayStation but you know, it's going to be awesome to see it's going to be awesome to see how many of these games actually ended up being uh PlayStation Studios games because I'm I'm very I'm just very excited to see you know, what's to come for next gen. I think this was a very strong launch and what better way to end it than showing off, you know, the arguably the biggest IP of the past five or six years, which is horizon zero dawn. Um, and I have not finished, uh, I have not finished horizon zero dawn because I'm a coward. And, um, that's definitely on my list to be able to do and, you know, co- complete. And we're actually going to be doing it on game club, me and Caleb are because he loves that game. Um, he's going through it on New Game Plus, and um, yeah, I mean, which you can go check out Game Club on most podcast services, uh, Spotify, you know, Apple Podcasts, whatever. I really liked the direction they were going with Horizon Two and kind of bringing back more 
organic life forms into the into the mix. And I don't know how Horizon ends, but if kind of if life is trying to retake, you know, the world from the machines, that could be pretty dope. So, you know, I'm I'm interested to see not only the end of Horizon and Horizon the Frozen Wilds, but I am interested to see what happens with Horizon Zero Dawn 2. One thing that I thought for sure was going to happen after, and maybe it still does happen and they're just waiting to tell us, um, one thing that I thought for sure was going to happen was I thought we were going to get co-op, especially in that last little frame where we see Aloy draw her bow back. How dope would it have been to see like a little squirt like come in behind her with their own bow and like do the same thing and then cut it to black? Like I don't know. I thought that would have been kind of dope because Horizon, the first one, they, they started building it as a, as a co-op game originally. So... I don't know. I don't, and they 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 were held back because of technical difficult technological difficulties or, or you know um, advancement hasn't really hadn't really gotten to that point yet. So you know I don't know. Yeah. I'm not gonna say it's a for sure thing, but I definitely am gonna hold my breath for it because I think we could probably see it. So what was your were you kind of impressed with Horizon's uh, performance or demonstration? What do you think? Oh yeah, as soon as they showed that shot of like her underwater with that giant like alligator gar looking thing, of, of, that looks so cool. And then like the the elephant uh, like war tower looking things, that was really dope too. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they do because I I haven't beat the the first one yet either. So like like I said, because I I didn't have time to get into it before I before I got out of it. But um, yeah, I'm inter- I'm interested to see that for sure. Yeah, the war elephants from uh from Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I was thinking more like uh, Mandy from Ice Stage, but yeah, that too. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, this was quite the event. They showed off. I'm counting up the games right now. They showed off one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. They showed off, or maybe I counted, maybe I counted wrong. They showed off 25 or 26 games um, today at the PlayStation event. Some of them, a lot of them, probably close to half of them being um, PlayStation Studios exclusives. And the other half, obviously, you know, they just wanted to showcase them being on the PS5. I was m- blown away by this presentation. It was everything I wanted and more. Um, I think, you know, there, there was a lot of these things that I, were, there was, there was a lot of surprises, but I think the biggest surprise was probably seeing the all digital PS5. Um, Jason Schreier tweeted, he said something like, uh, PlayStation announced Lockhart before Xbox did. And I couldn't, you know, if, if they do, th- if they do the thing of the all digital is going to be 400 and the disc, you know, the, the one with the disc drive is going to be 450 or even 500 or even, even if the disc list one is 450 and the one with the disc drive is 500, this, be more, more, more probable. this system is going to fly off the shelves it is going to be so hard to find one. So if you want one and you're like thinking about it and you're either you need to buy one day one or you need to wait a few months because that's going to be the, that's going to be the name of the game. Like this is going to sell out. So, um, I, I'm, I'm on board. It has my heart, uh, PlayStation. I'm a Sony pony at full on at this point. It's been a slow transition. Um, but I can proudly say that I, you know, I'm going strong. I mean, for God's sakes, whenever you order a magazine that is not available in the United States, the PlayStation magazine, and you get it shipped to the United States just so you can have it, I think that means you might be a true fan because that's what I've done. Um, today was not only a good day for gamers, but it was a good day. Today was not only a good day for PlayStation, but it was a good day for gamers because on Twitter, on, on seeing all these things, like people are, you know, shouting out Sony and shouting out PlayStation and, you know, people on Xbox's side, like being hyped about PlayStation or people who are huge fans of Xbox being super excited to see what, what has, you know, what comes to bring. And all I can say is Xbox make me and Mikey and the, the plethora of other content creators out there that have huge, huge platforms available to them make us have these conversations about your product. Like, give us a fight. Because right now, 
if you ask me to buy an Xbox One Series X two years from now and you don't have a banger of a lineup, I'm not doing it. I won't buy another Xbox, period. Um, so, like, Microsoft, like, that's what I'm saying is, is make me want to have this conversation of being conflicted or wondering if I am if I need to save up money to buy the console and buy the, the your box because right now, not doing a thing for me. I mean... Mm-hmm. We, we won't know until we see their event, but they better bring it. You know what I mean? Like, they better bring the heat is all I'm saying. Yeah. So, I uh, I loved this event. Did you? Were you down? You obviously, you loved seeing it. Were you hyped? Were you, were, I think I was probably a little more hyped than you were, but you seemed like you were pretty hyped. Yeah. I, I, it's just, it, it's, 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 it's new gen low, like Lobo, where I'm at right now. Because, like, I, I am very excited for everything that's happening. But it just seems like everybody everybody is launching and like saying, "You don't get hype for us. No, get hype for us." I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Just just tell me what I need to get. Like, yeah. Just, tell, just show me what you got. Shut up like, and take I, my money. I can, only, I can only, yeah, exactly. Like I can only be hyped for so long that I'm just like, yeah. I'm just waiting. Like at this point, like stop showing me stuff and just tell me what you got, and then I'll decide. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing too is we see people were were having the the conversation of why is it showing why is it Sony showing the box and oh my god and blah 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 and why am I talking like Hank Hill and all that stuff it's like because they're not ready to they're not yeah. ready to show you the box they want you to be like holy crap this is so impressive whenever they do show it off instead of uh, oh crap we better show something because um, we we've been keeping the momentum going and it's just the the clear distinction of focus and a roadmap it is night and day night yeah. and day whenever it comes to these two consoles and we talked about that the console war doesn't exist anymore yeah the console war doesn't exist anymore but it, you can talk about strategy you know and like why playstation makes certain moves versus xbox xbox has to bring the heat like if they better announce their price immediately and they better announce lockhart for sure or else it, like get i think it's Personally, I think it's a given at this point that they're going to announce yeah. Lockhart, or at least plans for it, because you can't not. You can't, you can't not just now. have a disk drive and then be like, yeah, well, it might be a couple years on that one for us. And if they yeah. do, that, I, there's going to be riots like, in yeah. the streets. Well, different kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, figurative. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm 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 excited, man. I'm hyped for video games at this point. I can't wait for holiday. Um, I I'm I'm excited to you know every time I turn on my PlayStation, I'm gonna be. It's nice to whenever I, I sit down to play video games and I'm thinking about whatever and I'm just decompressing. It's been a long time since it's been that thing of like I'm ready for the next new big thing. Yeah. And you know I've been saving my money for months. Like I have the I have the money. And it's like I know it's a cool feeling knowing that day one I can go in and buy my console and like, you know what I mean? It's just a, I can't wait, can't wait. So uh, that wraps up our, our recap of the event we saw, um, all the things that they showed off. What did you guys think? Were you surprised? Were you kind of like taken aback by um, you know some of the things that that was were were announced? I mean, did, were there any surprises that? that you found entertaining? Like, what'd you think of the all digital console? Like, let us know in the comments below. If you've gotten this far, definitely email us at geekly by weekly one at gmail.com. You can find us on all social media platforms at the wannabe critic. Um, you can definitely check out wannabe critic.com because, um, you know, we're going to have our content schedule up there. We have merch there. We got all kinds of stuff there. Go check it out. Um, any feedback is always welcome, obviously. And thank you guys for tuning in. Mikey, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at wannabe Mikey C. There you go, wannabe Mikey C. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Wannabe Critic Podcast. We appreciate you tuning in, Mikey. Obviously, thank you for making time tonight. We did three podcasts today. It's uh, kind of crazy. We uh, we like to get it done here. You know what I mean? Um, it's been a lot of fun, man. And I can't wait till our next discussion. So uh, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for preparing yourselves for a plethora of hot takes and potentially unpopular opinions. We will see you next time. Say goodbye, Mikey. So long.